Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna walk you through my very favorite Fuji lenses. If you're new to the system or you're just looking for the best lenses in the Fuji system, these are kind of the ones that I recommend. I have an array of Fuji lenses here before me. Uh, I just picked up this Fuji X-Pro2 on the release date was yesterday and I got mine. I'm excited to play with that. I know a lot of you guys are getting yours right now. Um, and so it's kind of brought on this question from quite a few listeners. So my philosophy with lenses is to buy once um, so that you don't have to continually upgrade and keep, you know, you buy your basic lenses, then you use them for a year, a few years, and then you buy a little bit of a better lens because you didn't want to spend too much, and then you eventually get the one that you can use for 10 years. Uh, I just really recommend you save up, take your time, and get a lens that's going to last you because I think it'll save you money in the long run and make you happy with your purchases. But the good news is that Fuji lenses aren't too expensive. So this is the wide-angle lens that I like in the Fuji system. This is the Fuji 10 to 24 millimeter f4. In the Fuji system, there just really aren't a lot of options for wide angle. So this is pretty much what you're going to pick. It's a very lightweight lens. You know, uh, it's actually extremely lightweight compared to what I'm used to with my old Nikon full frame stuff. It's the 10 to 24, it's an f4. I wish there was an f2.8 uh, wide angle in the Fuji system, but there's just not. But the nice thing is it's so lightweight, it makes it nice when I'm out doing nature photography. It's very sharp. I'll show you a couple photos that I've taken with this Fuji 10 to 24. Uh, this is out from my, uh, oh, wrong keyboard. Uh, this is from my Utah trip last year where I read up, met up with a bunch of readers of improvedphotography.com. Uh, for a few days and we had a good time shooting. Uh, I like how wide it is. It's very much comparable to what you're going to get uh, on a you know 15 to 16 millimeter lens in a full frame system and so you're really not losing any width uh, for a landscape photographer by going uh, mirrorless in this case. All right the next lens that I want to show you is the 16 there you are, 16 to 55 millimeter. This is the equivalent of a 24 to 70. Uh, I don't have it here with me. I think it's out in my garage. But I also own the 18 to 55 in the Fuji. And they're not even in the same league. I mean, the 16 to 55 is just a way better lens. Much sharper, faster aperture. Uh, it is more expensive, but I just really feel like uh, this one is worth the purchase. If you're wanting to do any of that kind of wider por portraiture stuff, this is the lens that you're going to end up using. So the 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8 RM uh, whatever. Uh, it's about a thousand bucks, and I really do feel like this one is worth it. Uh, it's one of the trinity of lenses that that I use and a lot of professional photographers use. You know, the 10 to 24, 16 to 55, and the 50 to, to 140 in the Fuji system. All right, the next lens is probably my most used lens. This is the 50 to 140. It's the equivalent of a 70 to 200. It's by far the biggest, heaviest lens of the of the Fuji crop, except I don't know about the new 100 to 400. Uh, it's an f2.8. This lens is absolutely awesome. If it weren't for this lens, I probably weren't wouldn't be a Sony I uh, wouldn't be a Fuji shooter. I feel like uh, the whatever camera manufacturer I choose has to have a good 70 to 200 equivalent. And so here this 50 to 140 is excellent with the crop factor. We're right in that same uh, focal range. I like that you can take the collar off completely uh, to drop some weight, but it does have a foot you can um, extend down there. So those are the lenses that I'm going to use most of the time. I'm going to use the 16 to 55, the 20, 10 to 24, and 50 to 140. Let me show you a couple photos that I have taken with those last two. Uh, this photo was taken with the 16 to 55, and these are with the 50 to 140. I can go full frame. I, I can press F in Lightroom, and it gives me a full screen view. Uh, this I did during my photography start class. You can buy the video from that workshop. Um, this is down in Southern Utah. Uh, I don't you do a whole lot of long, lan long lens landscapes, but uh, it's nice that the 50 to 140 is a little bit lighter than my 70 to 200, so I end up packing it a little bit more often than I used to. 
Great bokeh, as you can see. Just some great lenses. All right, now there are a couple issues. If, if you just get this trinity of lenses, it does leave a couple holes. The first hole that it leaves is with this, to wherever it is, 10 to 24, your wide angle lens. Since it's only an F4, I feel like I've also got to pack a specific night photography lens. And for that, I use the 16 millimeter F1.4. So it's super fast to get uh, to gather a ton of light for uh, night photography. This is a photo that I shot with it. Uh, that's at F1.4 down in Arizona. This is composited together. Uh, the sky is from a different shot, but with the same lens. Um, I really like the 16 millimeter f1.4. I wouldn't complain if it was a little bit wider for getting those night shots, but I've had really, really good luck with it. The good news is it's not terribly expensive. It goes for $799 uh, to get the 16 millimeter f1.4. Now the next specialty lens that I haven't tried yet is the Fuji 100 to 400. This is the new wildlife photography lens and I'm very anxious to see how this one performs but the the reviews have been pretty good so far. And the last specialty lens that I'll tell you about is this um, extension tube which I I like having an extension tube. They're inexpensive you can see here that an ex extension tube, whoop, I guess I didn't bring it up. Uh, anyway, an extension tube is, oh, there it is, $93. And basically you'll use this probably with the 50 to 140 or the 16 to 55. And it will become your macro lens, just allows you to focus up close. I don't like carrying one more lens just in case I do the, the offhand macro. I don't do a lot of them. And so I like just having a teleconverter for that. Well, that's it. That's the way that I would go. Those are my favorite Fuji lenses, um, the ones that I have tried and kind of I'm keeping in my kit. If there's one that I didn't include in this lens, but I really should have, it is the 56 millimeter f1.2, uh, which is basically the equivalent of an 85 1.2. I mean, I've heard glowing reviews of this lens. I'm jealous. I would love to try it out, but I haven't just yet. Um, I, I'm more of a zoom guy, but that's one that I, I really am interested in trying out. Well, if you're getting your first lenses on the Fuji system, I spend a lot of time and money into, refu into reviewing these lenses for you. And one way that you can help me out is to just click the link in the YouTube description here, and that'll go to my website where I have a f more information, a full review of all of these. And if you click those links over to Amazon now, just as, as you're doing it, then when you buy that lens, I get 4% of the purchase to help fund everything that I do at Improved Photography for you guys. Thank you all for your support. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me, and we'll see you in the next review. Bye.